Hello friends, welcome to the vlog for day four and five of summer meme. I feel like I really set myself up for success today. I dropped Liam off at a summer camp. No, I didn't sign him up for the summer camp so I could vlog more and participate in this readathon. It's just a, a nice perk. Um, and then I have reading sprints happening in half an hour. So I'm getting a little bit of a late start to my reading day, but I'm starting it with like lots of reading right off the bat with a bunch of friends, a bunch of fellow summer weenies. And I'm gonna read My Sweet Girl by Amanda Jayatissa today. And I feel like this sets me up for success because it's the longest book I think I have on my TBR. And the plan for tomorrow is to read a novella. So I don't plan or I'm not like committing to having to finish this today. If it bleeds into tomorrow, that's fine because all I'm committing to reading tomorrow is a novella. So no, this one doesn't knock anything more off of what I'm accomplishing because it's another library book. But I've had a couple of my friends comment saying that this is really good and that they think I'll like it. So I wanted to make sure I read it. So I drove into the city. I got myself a coffee, I did breakfast, I drove home. I should have maybe listened to the audiobook as I was driving, but I wasn't thinking about that. And I'm really looking forward to doing this live with my channel members and just hang out for maybe three hours, I would say. Then I have some other stuff to do outside of this readathon. Things exist outside this readathon. I know, I wish they didn't. But then I'll drive back into the city and pick up Liam from his camp. But that's the plan. Maybe I'll throw in some clips now of the live show. So you can get to know what I'm reading with less quality audio. <laughs> Isn't that what you love? I got to fell asleep. So. 50 of My Sweet Girl. I think it's good so far. I have no real feelings. We're bouncing back and forth between when this girl is 12 years old and leaving Sri Lanka. She's in an orphanage. And then current day, someone has died, but the body disappeared. So now the police just think she's like weird. Um, yeah, I don't really know much else of the vibe yet but it's going fine we're one sprint down of three and i'm at the 50 page mark i think it's gonna bring up some interesting topics we're already covering um orphans and um like colorism within the system how these girls are expected to act in order to be wanted um i actually think i'm gonna pick up the audiobook because for the next sprint i want to make brownies because i haven't made a spooky treat yet and that's what i definitely want to accomplish like of all the challenges let's do that one so i got a brownie mix and some icing and i also have some powdered sugar so depending on what cookie cutters i have and what shapes i can make i'll put little spider webs on them or something so uh, here's a little montage, I guess. <laughs> are failing but that means I get to taste test one now so yeah it's hard to mess up brownies especially when they come in a box I have pretty large eggs so mine turned out more cakey than fudgy um but that's I don't know that's fine it's still chocolate <laughs> okay once I turned off the camera I actually got a good spider web so happy with that this is a glass full of almond milk I'm sure someone will ask on Instagram if you like your coffee is so much cream in it because that happened last time like, like do people not eat cookies and brownies and cake with milk these days i mean i don't really but like it's a thing i guess because it's in a mug people might be like um that's weird and i just realized sweet 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 it all works together such good vibes okay i was just leaving the house to go get liam and there was a package sitting outside my door i couldn't already guess what it was <laughs> the label literally says book club merch mug in green i got the mug in green and i thought it would match the cover of um, the house across the lake better than i think it actually does based on what i've seen from other people yeah because the house across the lake is a little more yellow i think than i expected oh my gosh this is so beautiful i will definitely be doing another run of mugs in the fall if you missed out this is so cute how cute is this gonna look in like flat lays. I think green was the most popular color too. 
there was pink, red, orange, and green, and black. Black was obviously the number one, but after that for the actual colors, everyone was grabbing the green. And I'm glad that I did too. Okay, I gotta go pick up new glasses for Liam. Pick up Liam. Probably grab a few groceries because I got that big order of groceries and there was a couple things missing. That should only take a couple seconds. It's really hot today. I had to switch from my pants into a dress. I feel like I matched the cover of this. No, I don't. That's a green green. I'm like an emerald green. Anyway, I like the physical book and the audiobook pretty much the same, so I'm gonna listen to it as I'm driving and then probably finish it up physically because I am more than half, I'm probably three quarters of the way through at this point. The number one mystery is what happened to her when she left the orphanage when she was adopted. Something went down and she's constantly referencing it. And then we have like a little cliffhanger at the end of every chapter before it switches timelines. And then the current situation is the guy who's missing but also there's another person that something happened to in her real life and so maybe she is being set up for something someone wants to reveal the secrets from her past like that's what I'm gleaming from this situation I've never used the word gleaming before okay brownie taste test here's a piece with the chocolate frosting I'll rate it when I've tasted both of them there's three. Oh. All of them. Here's some with powdered sugar, and here's one with white icing. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know why I handed it to you like that. And poor little pumpkin. Normal frosting's first, this one's second, that one's third. Or wait, no, sorry, the like other frosting. The yeah. white frosting? Yeah. You like better? Yeah. Good. Good to know. I'm almost done my book, and right now it feels like probably a four star. If the ending, I'm just opening a package. Um, if the ending does what I hope it will, and if it does do what I hope I will, even if I can predict it, I think I feel good enough about this author's writing and the story she's trying to tell and the things that she's trying to do enough to pick her for a book club selection. Cause this is a debut and like, it's good. It's well written, easy to understand, intriguing. Let me fix the lighting and show you what I got. This isn't the order I just made. If you remember, I was telling you about my indigo order. Obviously that's not here. This is a different thing. Also, let me show you my indigo order. When it was buy three, get the fourth free. Here's all of the things that I decided to do and buy. In this box though, I have some more Victoria Speedwell books because I hope to continue in the series and love it for as, as many books as I have from the series now. So that's exciting. Next two things are two more Samantha Schweblins because I think, I think she's an author for me. Then what else did I get? Ooh, Last Exit by Max Gladstone. This is the co-author of This Is How You Lose a Time War, which I love. Then I also got The Inugami Curse because I heard that it's like Japanese Agatha Christie, super well known. And it's part of a series, but it doesn't matter what order you read it in. And people say that this one is better. I think I have that correct. I'm not gonna let this distract me from my TBR for this readathon. I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try really hard not to do that. Anyway, final thoughts in just a moment. I have a lot to say, but I also really need to go to bed and my battery's about to die. So what I'll say, is I almost felt like this was kind of similar to this, not in obvious ways, but in like following a character who you like, but then she does some weird things. Like she's got an edge to her. So maybe it's just the characters that I'm relating to each other, though they are very different and they've been through very different things. I don't know, I just, I feel like I would recommend these together. Anyway, Paloma, a very interesting character to follow. Her favorite book is Little Women, and I knew we were kindred spirits immediately. I think I'm giving this four stars, even though, oh my god, uh, this had my least favorite plot twist, but also my favorite plot twist. So what do I do? It was a fun time, and I want to read more from this author 100%. Oh, my battery lay is flashing at me now. It really wants me to shut up. Okay, how can I sum this up? Um, you know all the mysteries. The writing itself it isn't anything special, but it's an interesting story to follow. This is the type of thriller mystery that I enjoy, where it's like there's a mystery, but there's also a lot of other things to learn. You know, there's a cultural significance. There's relationship. There's family. There's also like reveals throughout the book. It was just 
a good time and I recommend it. And then I read one more story in Dark Stars by Alma Katsu. I can't remember what it's called. My battery's gonna die before I find it. Um, but I think like I've been distracted by wondering like, am I in my mystery, cozy mystery era? Am I in my, here it is. It's called The Familiar's Assistant. Am I gonna start my romance era? I think I've ignored the fact that I am in my vampire era. Like, let me live my vampire era. Please recommend me some vampire things because the vampire story in here, what, 20 pages? Live and die for it. It was everything that I needed uh, to end my night. So, so happy to have that introduction to that author that I've seen everywhere, but I've never read anything from her. Now I must. Um, but also, I can't believe I'm not reading a vampire book for this readathon and I'm devastated. And I'll see you tomorrow. I think my package of novellas will arrive. So just cross all of your fingers and toes. Good morning, friends. Uh, today, I felt like I needed my screaming shirt on. It just, it felt right. I'm planning a video for fall where I read books based on my favorite songs. And I have most of the songs picked, but picking one song from the wall like I don't, I don't know how I'm supposed to do it. Like I know my favorite album, I, I don't have a favorite song. All of it, everything, all the time. Um, today is a day for novellas. Do I have anything I need to catch you up on that I have left out? Oh, Scream 3, awful, oh my God. Like I was scrolling through my phone, awful. Like it didn't even hold my attention. And I'm starting to think I might have never seen Scream 4 because of the year that it came out. Like I had a tiny itty bitty baby. So I doubt I was watching it. If I if I did, I have forgotten the entire plot. What else? I think the mail is coming today with my novellas, though I picked up one um, from the library. I've already been out today. I dropped Liam off at summer camp. I drove around. I was filming clips as if I was gonna show you things when I got home. I don't know what it was supposed to be. Like, here's all the things I saw on my morning hour long drive. Here's a hot air balloon. Here's my Starbucks cup that they wrote on. Here's a white bush that would have been really conducive to my Instagram theme last month. <laughs> anyway, I stopped at the library and I picked up this because I had to re-reserve it. Uh, the Survival of Molly Southbourne. Here's the thing. I started this thing with my channel members where somebody gets to pick a book that I read every single month for the rest of the year, just like out of a hat, random. I picked it in this video if you wanna go back and watch. And one of the selections was not The Survival of Molly Southbourne, but the third book. But in order to read the third book in the month of July, which is when I committed to reading it, I need to read this one first. But that one is not going to arrive at my house by the end of the month. And it's not at the library and there's no audiobooks. So I'm in a bit of a pickle and I think you'll all just tell me that this works. Like it is fulfilling the challenge, even though it's not technically fulfilling the challenge. This is in the right vein of, and what the challenge intended, um, which is great and fine. And okay, I will read this today. So there's like part of my brain that's like, hey, you're in the fifth day of a seven day readathon. You're planning on reading two more novels with the last two days. You've already read three full length novels. Today's the day to just take it easy. Like you're lucky you haven't burnt out yet that you wanna read, just read the novella and chill. But there's another part of my brain that's like, what if you can't burn out? What if you're a superhuman? What if like this is the day to not just read a novella, but three novellas and not just three novellas, but every single book on your entire TBR shelf. I feel like I'm in such a healthy place with my reading. I'm reading so much and so much of it is so good and I never feel like I'm trying to hit a number or hit a goal or like get attention or clout or like feel like I'm doing things in order to say hey I've read 130 books this year but like I've read 130 books this year and like what if I can read another 130? Just because I have so many books on my TBR that I'm actively excited about. Like there are 130 books in my room that I want to read and I want to read them all right now. Cause I want to find amazing books and I feel like I probably have so many amazing books and I just want to get to them all. It's five seconds later and I just heard the male man person human. So let's go get it. Now the decision of which one to read is going to be that much harder. Cause I'll have all three of them in front of me. It feels a little thick. So there must be something else in here too. Don't remember what it is. Hopefully it doesn't make me want to read it and mess up my TBR. Oh my God. 
book number one. Oh yeah, Nana by Brandon Massey. This is thinner than I thought. I thought that was the novella I was pulling out. I will be reading this soon and I didn't know it was only 250 pages. Exciting. Next book is smaller. It's You've Lost a Lot of Blood by Eric LaRocca. I've seen a lot of people reading this Eric LaRocca this week and even DNFing this Eric LaRocca. So I think this was probably a good choice. And then, oh, there's two more things. Fish swimming in dappled sunlight. Exciting. Um, this is smaller than I thought too. 200 pages? It's just something I saw briefly, I think on Instagram and I immediately ordered it. Over the course of one night. I had, I didn't even read the synopsis. <laughs> There's two characters, each of them think the other is a murderer and they need to ex extract a confession before the night is over. Who's the murderer and what really happened on the mountain? Okay, this didn't look like it would be conducive for this readathon. But maybe it is. It's a battle of wills and it's a psychological thriller. Oh, it's only 200 pages. Oh no, what have I done? Oh, this one is really small. Crossroads, Laurel Hightower. I think I also picked this up on a whim. It's about a woman whose son dies in a car crash and blood falls from her hand onto her son's roadside memorial and then she thinks she sees his ghost outside her window. Okay, and then this one, there is no synopsis. Each precious thing I show you in this book is a holy relic from the night we both perished. The night when I combed you from my hair and watered the moon with your blood. You've lost a lot of blood. Oh no. Okay, and then this series, if you don't know what it's about, it's about a clone. It's also about blood. Oh my God. I'm somehow reading three things about blood. But basically every time she bleeds, another Molly appears and she's like training her whole life to fight all the Mollies and kill them all. It's incredible. Um, and then this one, I think it's just like later in her life. Molly Southbourne's alive. If she wants to survive, she'll need to run, hide, and be ready to fight. Can Molly escape or will she confront the bloody history that made her? Fuck it, let's do it. Three novellas in one day. Maybe four novellas in one day. Let me not commit to anything. Like this is 200 pages. Just because these are short to me, it doesn't look ambitious, but like when you combine them, guess what? It's a full length novel in one day. 450 pages is the goal today. Check in with you in a sec. It's 1 p.m., first novella down. Let's look at what I've accomplished so far, actually. I have a new release and an arc left, and those are for the next two days. Okay, then for the actual challenges, I bake it a tree. Let's call these Halloween colors. It's orangey, brown, and black. Haven't completely read a book in the dark, but I don't have any audiobooks. I don't have any audiobooks left. So I was thinking maybe this had an audiobook. It doesn't. The only one that had an audiobook is this one. But I was like, I'm not buying an audiobook for a hundred page story. I was thinking of doing the Megan Miranda on audio, but that wouldn't be in the dark because I'm gonna read it while I'm like on a hike tomorrow. I'm not gonna do this Sarah Daily as an audiobook or in the dark because I'm doing an entire dedicated spoiler filled vlog for it. How do I read this in the dark? It's literally the middle of the day. Okay, well, I've decided I'm reading this next. That's what we figured out because this is long and it's light out. And then this one, I'll figure out how to read in the dark. Anyway, what else is on here? The haunted thing is not happening. Oh, and a slasher. I'm supposed to read a slasher. Maybe this is a slasher. If a lot of people die and there's a knife involved, that's a slasher, right? Anyway, this is a story about grief. If you know me, that's the exact type of story that I love to read, horror surrounding grief. Uh, it's basically like, what would you do in order to get your child back? What would you sacrifice? And how does that impact the people around you? So we have this woman who lost her son, who's like a grown, uh, I think he was like 22 when he died. And she goes and visits his, um, not his grave, but where he specifically died. She drops her blood on it and she sees a ghost of him and she obviously wants to recreate that. So it becomes this obsession of like, how much do I have to give to see him again? I feel like it's a pretty predictable story that I feel like I've read before I've consumed this type of media before. And it was good. It was eerie. Um, I liked seeing all the people in her life, like her ex-husband, the new partner she's involved with, her friend, and how everybody 
is trying to help her trying to understand her but how no matter what this grief is consuming her entire life and she just needs to feel like she is taking hold of it and doing something about it so it was eerie and odd um, it wasn't like super creepy or particularly scary it's just a paranormal haunting with grief at the center and i'm giving it four stars up next is this guy how horrifying is this cover i just got so lucky my friend katie is doing reading sprints and i need someone to hold me accountable for reading this and finishing it quickly because i've spent the last hour not doing anything um well i was taking like instagram pictures and watching people's summerween vlogs so not nothing but like kind of nothing let's be productive with some cutie internet friends what are you reading kayla <gasps> oh i mean oh <laughs> <laughs> i didn't know there was a book inside the book which uh -huh. is historically something i hate so now mm -hmm. i'm worried the, i would think of it as the book that's inside the book is actually the book that you're reading like i wouldn't even consider it a book inside a book because it's like 85 percent of the book oh okay okay because this book references the haunting of hill house multiple times i feel like it should count towards um the challenge of a haunting book and that's what i decided and thank you for your time and consideration <laughs> Kayla, I like the faces that you were making while you were I, 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 like, I, don't know, I don't know what I was expecting, but it's not this. Now, obviously, I didn't know what to expect from this book because all I read was that. Um, but yeah, it's definitely not what I could have predicted. It's strange. And well, obviously, it's strange. Um, but it's not even quite the genre I was expecting. Let me tell you some lines i have enjoyed i can so distinctly recall thinking how drowning him would have been such an insult to his beauty first of all then this is interesting there's these people having a conversation um and the person says it's a terrible story they're like telling a story obviously and he says there's no point to it other than to disturb the listener and the other person says sometimes that is the point and i think that that's very much eric laroca um talking about how he feels about his goal of his own writing and then also oh this is a spoiler but there was a little startling moment on page 105 and i was like okay so it's like we're reading a book inside a book but that is the book like there the bulk of the book is the book like katie was saying but there's little things in between some of the chapters we'll get like two or three chapters of this book that this person wrote and then it'll give a little insight in between of like the author's life and just like a little bit of dialogue between a couple people or a little poem and i don't really get it like i kind of get it but i want to get it more and the story is about um a woman and her brother and their going to work on like this game like a virtual reality uh situation and the people they encounter in the house that they go to it's odd not in a spooky way but in a uh, just in a horror way i'm gonna vlog reading the final little bit because i feel like maybe it's gonna end in a way that like explains things or maybe it'll just be shocking i don't know but my family's on the way home i have one sprint left and i need to wrap it up Thank you.
Oh my god. Oh my god. Okay. I felt like at the halfway point that I I wanted it to be five stars so bad and I felt like it was going in that direction and I just didn't want to like commit to it until I knew what was going on and if you've read this book and you know what went on you know why it's five stars for me um if you haven't read it I can't tell you why I loved it because I would spoil it um but it definitely has something in common with a bunch of other five stars that I've read. I'm obsessed. I almost don't want to give it five stars because I feel like it didn't need the in-between stuff. Like it could have just stood alone. Though the other story that's running parallel like is interesting on its own. And I feel like this is just instead of him publishing another short story collection, he like combined them. I get it. I don't know if it's necessary. Um, but... I have to give it five stars like there's no way there's no way that's not a five star read incredible what a great day for me Kayla how are you liking you lost a lot of blood oh this was a five star and I'm so happy with my life okay I need to talk about it this place please okay left the live show the sun is about to set and I thought I would just start this I feel like this is not a good decision but I paused I made dinner I think I'm gonna pop back into the live and see if I can read a little bit of this and then move over to Molly Southborn. And if I don't finish this, I'll finish this another day. Or maybe I'll just read the first couple chapters and see how I like it. Okay, well, Kayla, this is perfect now that you're here. But Book Riot posted a, like, list. Probably Summer Ween inspired. But it says 10 mystery thriller booktubers you've got to follow. And you, me, and Gabby, and Jordaline, and Bree, and Ashley are all in there. And it's so cute. Shut up. That's amazing. We are slowly approaching sunset and I've gotten 35 pages into here and that's it so far. I want to read this so much just because I want to know like what the goal of the book is and if there's going to be some like reveals because right now we're just following two characters and we don't even get their names at the beginning of chapters. It's just like I did this, I did this and you start to understand like what perspective you're reading from and they both think that the other person killed this man. So there's a man who died, they both know about it, it was deemed like accidental by the police, but they both think the other person had a hand in it. Which doesn't necessarily mean that, because I feel like you could say, okay, well then you know that neither of them did it because they both think the other one did it. But I think it's probably more like maybe they both participated in the death, but they're not willing to give up what they did until they know what the other person did. I'm definitely intrigued, but it's very slow moving. Like I think it's just gonna be them sitting together for this one night, thinking a lot, pondering their situation, how much they should reveal. I'm gonna keep going until there's no more sun. My book just got interesting. Here's our last sliver of light. I'm basically in a self-imposed time crunch because I only want to read this one while the sun is out because I need to start another book and read it in its entirety in the dark. So as soon as the sun's gone, Molly Southbourne begins. My book just got good. And I'm thinking maybe I have invented what this challenge actually was. Like, does the graphic say read the entirety of a book in the dark? Let's double check this. Read a book in the dark. That's all it says. It doesn't say read 200 pages in the dark. It just says read a book. Not even a whole book. Not even like only read that book when it's nighttime. So I could read a chapter of this in the dark but it's not actually gonna be the dark <laughs> i'm gonna read by the light of my salt lamp i could read with a candle i could read with a flashlight it's got to be something that only emits a little bit of light i need to continue in this because there was just an interesting reveal that i definitely hadn't considered I 
even see me. But my pajamas are on, my glasses are on, which means sleep is imminent. I'm at the halfway point and this book is getting a little bit different. It's feeling more like a drama as opposed to, um, there is a mystery running through it, but I don't know that the thrilling element would make me refer to this as a thriller. The conversations we're having though are very interesting. What the characters are internally and externally grappling with, with their relationship with one another. I think this will be a divisive book. Perhaps it already is, but upon this um, translation, we'll see what people think of it. There's a good amount of like hiking content, then discussing what it's like out in the woods, the thing that happened, they keep coming back to it, the beautiful scenery, the views. It's a pretty slow read for only being 200 pages, so hopefully I finish it in the next hour, but we'll see. Oh my goodness. Um, that was an interesting time. Who on earth do I recommend this to? I don't know. Also, what's my rating? I don't know. <laughs> I want to give it a four. I really, I do. It's one of those books that's a little ambiguous and I feel like people might say is a little unsatisfying in multiple ways, like multiple different storylines that are going on. Uh, a little anticlimactic in certain ways, but that is my type of story. I do enjoy just getting to ponder what I think the characters got up to once this ends or what really happened throughout the book in a couple different scenarios that left on a, with a little bit of loose ends. It's a book about a lot of theories. So these two characters are talking, discussing, reminiscing about their relationship, about their lives, about this trip that they took. Um, and they come up with a lot of ideas of what really happened. And because there are a couple different mysteries in here and they're just spending one evening together it doesn't feel like one night but it is you know it's not a mystery in the sense that they're talking to multiple people and there's detectives involved and there's a crime being investigated it's more just them having this discussion it doesn't get too weird there's a couple really interesting and jarring reveals for sure but it's not weird outside of like not really being able to categorize it in a genre i would say that's it but it's 11.30 and I mean that means I have half an hour to try to read as much as I can of this. Rob's already gone to bed. I'm not quite tired yet though I have to wake up at 7 and I'm gonna start my day with a nice long walk tomorrow after I drop Liam off at camp because I have not moved my body very much these last two days as you've seen. So I should get a good night's sleep but also I want to read it. And I'm just now realizing I didn't read a story from Dark Stars. I have to ignore that because I want to be able to say, at least I tried. Okay, the good news, I made it to page 80, um, which means I only have 40 more pages to read. So I'm just gonna do that right now. I don't care that it's technically day six. The bad news is um, I'm not liking it. <laughs> I don't need it to turn around in this last 40 pages. I just needed to stop talking about her weight because why is that the entire story? I don't wanna spoil the first book or what happens in this book, um, but she essentially is having a psychotic break at the beginning of the book and ends up in a hospital. I don't know what it's adding to the story to be constantly talking about how much how much weight she gained. She's been in the hospital for one month um, and then she's leaving and she says she's gained 22 pounds and how this new weight must be hell on my joints. So I cut calories, bump up my protein, start working out again. Let me finish it and then I'll go to bed finally. I finished it and sadly we're ending a fantastic reading day with the flop of the readathon. This is like a two star. It just it was kind of an unnecessary like addition to the original novella. I am still going to finish the trilogy because I want to know how it all ends and I want to feel complete with it. Um, but it kind of reminds me of the way that I felt reading the spin-off series of The Raven Cycle, when the world expands and you learn that there's so much more going on than you even thought. And like, I don't need there to be more going on. Like, I just like the insular Molly story. There are some intriguing transcript sections. Um, that's probably my 
favorite part but also like that section too is a lot to do with like weight and like somebody's body changing and like oh I now need to fit into XXL like think about elastic waist shorts that's the only thing that'll fit me and a lot of like diet conversations and throwing up because they're getting too much nutrition in like there's a reason behind all of it like it's fine for the plot I just don't think that this plot is interesting enough for a book it was just kind of weird the story he wanted to tell and how he decided to tell it but that's just me I read five books in this vlog and I'm ready to sleep